This is part six of a series on the support vector machine. In this video, we will implement a nonlinear SVM from scratch using CVXOPT. And let's also implement this with scikit-learn's SVC. This video was produced in Korean and translated into English. My voice is AI-generated, text-to-speech. In the last video, we looked at the basic algorithm for nonlinear SVM. We created a nonlinear decision function using kernel trick and kernel function. In this video, we will solve the QP problem of the Lagrangian dual function for nonlinear SVM. Generate a decision function, and then predict the class of the test data. Let's implement a nonlinear SVM from scratch using the CVXOP library. We will then implement this using scikit-learn's SVC and compare the two results. The QP problem for nonlinear SVM is almost the same as for the linear soft margin SVM. Just replace the data x with the data phi x converted by a kernel function. The Lagrange dual function of nonlinear SVM is as follows. Only x in the dual function of linear soft margin SVM is replaced by phi x. As we did in soft margin SVM, we define this part as matrix Hij. The dot product of phi xi and phi xj is defined as a kernel like this. Then the matrix H can be expressed as follows. This is the kernel matrix K that we looked at in the last video. This is an example where n, the number of data points, is 2. And this is element-wise multiplication. The Python code for calculating the matrix H is like this. Using the matrix H, the dual function can be expressed as follows. Both the objective function and constraints are the same as those of the linear soft margin SVM. The only difference is that the matrix H contains the kernel matrix. Now we convert this problem into the standard form of QP and define each matrix. The problem of maximizing the dual function is equivalent to minimizing the negative dual function. And we also need this constraint obtained from the primal function. This is then an optimization problem with two inequality constraints and one equality constraint. Here x corresponds to the lambda of our problem. And the matrix P corresponds to the matrix H in our problem. Matrices Q, A, and B can be defined as follows. And the matrices G and H can be defined like this. This part is the first inequality constraint. And this part is the second inequality constraint. This is exactly the same as the QP problem of the linear soft margin SVM, except that the matrix H contains kernels. First, let's implement a nonlinear SVM from scratch using CVXOPT. Let's use simple data like this. The class of red data points is positive 1 and the class of blue data points is negative 1. This data cannot be separated by a single straight line. Instead, they can be separated by these curves or these curves. Let's write a function that calculates the value of the kernel function. This is a function that calculates a p-order polynomial or RBF kernel function. The p-order polynomial formula is as follows. For the polynomial, p is set to 3 and c is set to 1 by default. The formula for RBF or Gaussian function is as follows. 
The gamma is set to 0.5 by default. The constant C is set to 1.0. And we use a polynomial as the kernel function. Next, we create the kernel matrix as follows. And as defined on the previous page, create the matrices to be input into the standard format of QP as follows. Next, we input these matrices into the QP function of CVX op to find the solution to the dual function. The final solution, lambdas, are contained in this variable. We use these lambdas to find support vectors. The data points with lambda greater than zero are support vectors. Next, find B using the lambdas and support vectors. Let's write a function to calculate the dot product of w and phi of x using this formula. Here, xs represents the support vector. And x is an arbitrary vector. x can be a positive or negative support vector that is input when calculating b. svm is the lambda value of the support vector and SVY is the class of the support vector. And this part is a kernel. Using the above function, we calculate B as follows. SVY greater than zero means positive support vectors. And SVY less than zero means negative support vectors. Select the largest of the positive support vectors and the smallest of the negative support vectors, and calculate B as the average of these. This formula was explained in linear soft margin SVM. Now that we have the support vectors in B, we can create a decision function that can be used to predict the class of the test data. To visually check the nonlinear decision boundary, we will randomly generate 1,000 test data points in this space. And let's predict all the classes for the test data points. In this way, we generate a kernel matrix between all support vectors and the test data points. Next, we create a decision function using this formula. SVM is the lambda value of the support vector. And SVY is the class of the support vector. And TSK is the kernel matrix between the support vectors and the test data points created above. Adding B here becomes the decision function for the test data. The class of the test data with a positive y hat is predicted to be positive 1. And the class of the test data with a negative y hat is predicted to be negative 1. This is y pred, the predicted class of the test data. Now let's check the results visually. If the class of a test data point is positive 1, it is displayed in red, and if the class is negative 1, it is displayed in blue. The results are as follows. You can see that the nonlinear decision boundaries are created like this. If the test data points are inside the boundaries, the classes are positive 1. And if they are outside the boundaries, the classes are negative 1. The results of using the RBF kernel function are as follows. The nonlinear decision boundaries are created like this. We cannot say which result is better. But for this data, the results of RBF seem to be better. If a test data point is at this location, it would be closer to this data point. So predicting the class as negative 1 would seem more reasonable. Let's run this code. The results are as follows. 
Next, let's implement a nonlinear SVM using scikit-learn's SVC. The data is the same as used in the previous code. Create SVC model. RBF or polynomial can be used as the kernel function. The gamma of RBF is set to 0 0.5, the same as the previous code. And P of the polynomial is also set to 3, also the same as the previous code. We then fit this model to the training data. We then find B this way. It is not possible to find W in a nonlinear SVM. If you try to find W like a linear SVM, you will get the following error. The coefficient variables are only available in linear SVM. Randomly generate 1000 test data points. We then use the decision function provided by the SVC model to predict the class of the test data. Same as the previous code, if y hat is positive, the class of the test data point is predicted as positive 1. Otherwise, it is predicted as negative 1. SVC's predict function makes prediction easy. Let's check the results. For a polynomial kernel, the nonlinear decision boundaries are as follows. This is similar to the results using CVXOPT in the previous code. The same goes for RBF kernel. Let's run this code. The results are as follows. Lastly, let's classify the Titanic survivors dataset using nonlinear SVM. Let's classify them using CVXOP and SVC respectively. And let's compare the two results. Let's try CVXOP first. We read the Titanic survivors dataset and perform some simple pre-processing. The data that has completed pre-processing is as follows. Then we generate the training data and test data. Since the features have different sizes, they need to be normalized. The values of this feature are small, while the values of this feature are large. We use z-score normalization as follows. And this data contains many categorical features. We need to convert these to one-hot encoding or something like that but we will use it as is to focus on the nonlinear SVM algorithm. Write a function to calculate the RBF kernel function value as follows. To solve the QP problem, we generate the kernel matrix and construct the matrices as follows. The following code is the same as the previous code, so explanation will be omitted. Next, let's classify this data using scikit-learn's SVC. Create SVC model. The kernel is used as RBF and the gamma is set to 0.5. Fit this model to the training data and then predict the classes of the test data. Check the accuracy of the test data. The results are as follows. The accuracies of the test data measured by CVXOP and SVC are the same, 0 0.8072. Let's run this code. The results are as follows. So far, we have implemented a nonlinear SVM using CVXOP and SVC. In the next video, we will look at multi-class classification.